the fruit of his doing. See what you said right there? The Lord tried all. He gonna search your mind, and you get paid based off the fruit of your doings. Yep. Right? Because what you think about, you eventually act on. Yep. If you think about robbing that bank too long, you're going to rob that bank. Yep. If you think about hollering at his woman too long, you're gonna commit adultery. Yep. Right? What you think about, you act on. Remember, the Lord tells you right there, he gives you, he gives you according to your heart's desire, the fruit of your doings. You gonna answer for that. And this, and this here is in this life. So you don't, you don't, you know, like I say, I realized this one day, you know, the Spirit put it on me, whether you believe in God or not. Like all these atheists out there say, hey, you know God and all that. Whether you believe in him or not, you are still subjected to the truth. And atheists don't get to have everything in this world. Right. And just because he don't believe, what would be that to the believers? You know, what example would that be to the believers if, just like what we read last week, in, 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 in the Apocrypha, in the second book of Ezra, when he talked about you bringing the people who were more wicked than we was, and you show them faith. You know, we have things that we have to do in this way. He said, I'm going to give you according to your doings. So you do well, you receive well. No doubt. No doubt. It's not just here today sitting here listening. And then going back out there and doing and returning to the world and returning to the streets. Keep the party going on. Right. You, <laughs> this is something that you have to keep in your heart at all times. Right. I do well, I get well. If I do wrong, I do evil, I think evil, I contemplate evil, mm -hmm. go to sleep with that on your mind mm -hmm. and see what happens while you sleep. Trip off there right there. Let's go to Proverbs 28 real quick. Proverbs 28, 26. When the brother talking about, they tell you in society. What goes around comes around. What goes up comes down. The Bible says what you sow, you got to reap that. Whatever you plant, you got to harvest that. So if you sowing in society, murder, witchcraft, rape, robbery, guess what you're going to get back? It's a simple equation. Like, it ain't hard. That's, that's exactly what you're going to You're going to reap what it is you sow. Whatever you put out is what you get back. That's right. Right? So you want blessings? Right. You want long life, probably 28, yeah, 26. You want blessings, long life, drama free? You see what I'm saying? Do what it does say in the scripture. And the scripture is not some type of square uh, religious book. The, the, the Bible is a, na a nationhood book, a nationalist. It's about the Israelites. Right? The, the rise, the fall, and the soon coming redemption. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual book. It's not a religious book. Now, all the religions of the earth got hold of it, but they all, what they're doing is promote man made tradition out of it. Right? right, right. right? Such as, well, Halloween, that's what's coming up. Right? Easy research to show you that's druid demon works. Easy. Easy. The jack o' lantern was a child that was sacrificed that year. Easy. I'm talking about you can send your folders. Get on your, put your house shoes on, right. and get your smartphone out and Google origins of Halloween. Mm -hmm. It'll blow your mind, right? So for somebody to try to dress that up as if that's okay, right. they said we're going to call it a Hallelujah Festival. Trunk or treat. Or a trunk or treat. Trunk or treat. But the Bible tells you you can't eat at the table of the Lord at the that's table right. of death. That's right. You got to choose a side. That's right. Right? If the jack o' lantern is a sacrificed child, like had you been living during the time of the Druids, Y'all know what, like if, if the lock fell on your little boy, daddy came and took that boy and sacrificed him and drained his blood on the earth because they believed that pure blood given back to the earth would allow the gods that uh, allow us to have a successful heart. Huh? I mean, if they make a candle out of it. They used the fat from that child to make a candle. They fashioned the candle and put it in the inside of that pump and called the jack o' lantern trick or treat. I mean, that's easy research. Right. But I mean, somebody would say, well, I mean, why do we do it today? Good question. Who passed it to you? Who taught you that? Well, mama, who taught her? My, her mom. Not meaning she didn't have your best interest or didn't love you. They all were taught something that's not in her. Right. Right. And so we, you learn the, the, the culture of another nation. Yes. You ain't learned the scripture because if you did, you would catch Christ saying, trick or treat. Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> huh? Happy Easter. Huh? New Year in the middle of winter. Like you, you know, uh, the Sabbath been switched to tomorrow, Sunday. First day, like you would catch Christ doing these things. But everywhere you read about him, he was observing the Torah, the Tanakh, which is the Old Testament, as it is written in the prophets. 
What say if Isaiah? What say if Jeremiah? What say if Ezekiel? He quote the Old Testament the whole time. Hey. Showing I'm the fulfillment of that. They all speaking about me. I'm here in the flesh. Let's roll. You see what I'm saying? But today his message has been thwarted to where you think he just some passive hippie. Yep. <laughs> just, just, just love everybody. Yeah, go holler at him on Sundays and you good. Right? Today, our people will pray for the devil. Yep. You'll pray for him. Lord, have mercy on Satan. Yep. <laughs> but Jesus Christ, John chapter 17, verse 9, y'all should write that down. In yep. his prayer to his father, he said, I'm not praying for the world. Yep. I'm praying yep. for those you gave me. I'm not praying for anybody. Yep. But today, he's like, oh, pray for the Pope and give the devil his due. <laughs> 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 Let's read it. That's, that's John 17 and 9. Read the whole chapter, John 17. It's his prayer to his father before they crucified. Go ahead, bro. Christmas at, as a high holy day sanctioned by God in the Bible. You get $4,000 a piece. Who don't need that? I need it. Like if you said $4,000 a piece for everybody who can prove Passover given by the God of the Bible, I'm coming to collect. Right. Everybody down, we paid. We paid. We all the line up there, chop them first, and you're going to pay us out four racks a piece. Right. <laughs> but you wouldn't be able to do that. She got something I'm coming to you, brother. Go ahead, sir. I buried my mother last Saturday. Mm -hmm. The church she been in all this time that uh, supposed to help us, you know, with the finance. Yeah. And, and the Bible couldn't say bring all your money to the storehouse so it could be meat for my people. So when we were short on the front room, mm -hmm. I thought the man just gave us the money, you know, yeah. to help my mama, her mama, I, all my family go to this church, they pay tithes. Mm -hmm. We was taught that. Well, that should have been that should have been paid for. I uh, well, I got seventy five thousand dollars to get the trip seven. I mean that's all you need. But what I want to say is what they see in the Bible, then you can't convince them to do that because after the funeral, we was told uh Pastor said he wants that thousand back tattoos. Wow. Yeah, we were 
need that money back. <laughs> Still rehearse the righteous acts found in the Old Testament. Go ahead, brother. Alright, what about Moses' law? Did Moses' law fall because of Christ? Moses well, you got, we got to what Moses' law is. Christ and Moses' law go hand in hand. Okay. You feel me? The difference is the priesthood. Right. Priesthood, what you had to do to go atone for your sins. Under Moses, 
it was bring some animal and they blood, flesh and animal <coughs> blood. Under the Melchizedek order, it's the body of Christ. You feel me? Well, his crucifixion was a sacrifice. Okay, That's what that was. So when people say, when, when it says Moses law, or uh, something that's, that's nailed to the cross or whatever, it's talking about the law of the priest. But did Christ say, uh, uh, you can't talk to the Father or against him no without going through him first. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. He's the way to the Father. Now, I, I, I want to go back a little, a little, a little bit where you were at first. And uh, before Jesus went into the heaven, he told me that they're going to do, we prophesied that they will do all the mighty things yeah, yeah. You know, he said greater. greater Not on the same level Not somewhere, not in the same ballpark He said greater Spiritual part Yeah, no doubt What about this? Who doing that? Like who's dudes walking on water? Well, no, no, we, we, I didn't say about walking on water. I'm talking about, I'm talking about like, yeah, no doubt. We're talking about when you say you say greater, greater works than you. That's what I'm talking. about. Like ain't nobody walking on water. Bro, even that day, Jesus Christ said, you can walk on water if you believe and have faith. But if we don't have that measure of faith to believe that we can do this. No doubt, no, no doubt. You gotta have faith. Faith is a grain of mustard seed. My simple question to you is, who is doing greater works than Yahweh Shai now? I'm not looking for that. But the thing That's what you call it. You said we shall do greater works than that. So, so, so since since he died, who has done greater? Okay. What I was trying to say is mm -hmm. that since we have that available to us because he did die. He did raise again, he did okay. go up into the heaven, yeah. and he did send it back what he said he's going to do. Yeah, you have to believe in that right. and try to receive that. That's what no, no, I'm no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm just trying to get you to see when the greater works come. You feel me? Like, no man in the flesh is doing good. Like, like, people ain't even came close to what he was doing. Like, no, no matter what it is, I'm talking about opening the eyes of the blind, yeah. feeding folk, healing folk. Like nobody even came close, but see, there is a time coming in which we will be given our spiritual powers, resurrected out the grave, become immortal, and as a mighty nation, do works like you've seen him do on earth. We will be doing those things in the world to come. Hold on. Uh, some of the priests, the apostles, they 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 got the gift. They had spiritual powers. No, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. My question is, who's doing greater? You, you losing focus. What's greater works than these? I'm saying this. I can't tell you that because I'm, I'm not watching. I'm saying, bro, you quoted it first. You said but greater. I don't know of this, and mm -hmm. I'm saying this, mm -hmm. that there are some people that's doing that. Because that's the Bible says that there are greater. Because there are people with spiritual power. My question is, who is doing it greater? Nobody. You just about this, but that's what came off your mouth at first. You said right. greater things than these. Right. Nobody can did greater. Hear about me and the Lord dealing with. Certain brothers know how to heal. Certain brothers know how to do certain things. You know what I'm saying? Know that right. the Lord dealing with. Of course. Right. I'll never deny that. You got apostles calling them, Peter them was doing miracles. They weren't greater though. The devil did treat God before though, try to try to make you not believe. Like when he went to the uh he threw a stick down to the stake he had. Spiritual power, Moses. You know what I'm saying? know when it's the truth of what he said it's going to be great. Yeah. Anybody going to know that it's who the word is going to be the worst of the most high. Yeah. You can't mistake it. Like when he say, I will be sanctified in the midst of my people. Like that will be something that's evident in that day. You feel me? Them brothers are immortal. You can't kill them. They, under, they, they, they in order. They in rank. They are mighty army of God. You cannot deal with them people. That's when the greatness come. Of course, there are brothers with spiritual power. The Lord measure out to each man according to his ability. I never deny that. You feel me? But the greater works, those days are still to come. You feel me? That's what we wait on. No doubt, bro. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. No, it ain't an argument. It ain't an argument. Hey, it's all about understanding. I heard greater come out. So, you feel me? So, for everybody, let's get this about the Old Testament. So, greater has to change it. Let's read this. 2 Peter 3. Okay. 2 Peter 3, 1 and 2. 
The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I sit up, stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Please have to stir up your minds, pure minds by remembrance. Call something back into your memory. Come on, brother. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. There you go right there. Be mindful of the words spoken of before by the holy prophets. Where are the prophets in the Bible? The Old Testament. That's the Old Testament. Old Testament. So Peter, right hand man of the mother of the Messiah, he going on record like, look, I'm trying to get y'all to remember. Stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Be mindful of the words of the holy prophets. So the Old Testament is still valid. All right, come on, brother. And of the commandment of us, the apostles mm -hmm. of the Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. That's it for that? Yeah. Romans 15 and 4. That's that next one. Romans 15 and 4. Then we're going to get to some more parables of the, of the Messiah. <clears throat> Romans 15 and 4. These two scriptures right here. Where you take somebody if they want to argue that the Old Testament is done away with. In other words, you got 2 Peter 3, 1 and 2, Romans 15 and 4. You got something, brother? Yeah, Acts 24, 14, 15. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good one, too. Acts We got to read that. We want to read that one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Acts yeah. And then also on your real, Acts 28. 28, 20 through 23. We're going we gonna to read things about the Old Testament real quick. So you can understand, we believe in the entire book. The entire book. Acts 24. Acts 24, 14 through 15. But he's in, uh, Rome, he's in Romans 15 now. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Yes, sir. For whatsoever things were uh -oh. Old Testament is still about. There are prophecies in the Old Testament that still ain't came past yet. That's right. Like the day of the Lord. Isaiah 65 and 25. Man, there's, there's a lot of prophecies still left to be fulfilled. So how are you throwing away something that ain't been fulfilled yet? Right. See, I, I looked that up too while, you, while we waited y'all to get that. I looked up that Isaiah 65 and 25 as opposed to see. I, I use this scripture for our people because they all know this one. It says that the wolf and the, and the lamb would lie down together and that the lion would be destroyed like a bullet. That's like every black person know that one because I would grow up with that one. And that's in the Old Testament and they know that ain't happened yet. So this is the script I use when they say it's done away with. It. I say, well, you know the parable about the lion and the, and the bullet and the straw, don't you? They're like, yeah. I said, has that happened yet? No. I say, so where is it written? Old Testament, right? So how can you do away with prophecies that have not yet come to pass. And that is the one key, that one that I use yeah. for our old people is because that's the one I know that they know. They, you know, I, I remember being a child and hearing my parents talking about that. You know, the lion and the lamb, they're going to lay down together. You know, and you hear it in the churches, and the, and the, and the lion going to eat the straw like the bullet. Ah, you know, and it's like, okay, this is one that y'all know. And y'all know it ain't happening. Not the right. Right. Let's go to the zoo and see the right now, boy. He's done. All right, let's get this. Being wrong with Romans 15, Romans 4. 15, verse 4. Yes, sir. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. You see that? Whatever was written afore or before was written for our learning. So how are you doing away with the Old Testament? Let's read, brother. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Might have hope. Okay, so y'all mark that. 2 Peter 3, 1 and 2, Romans 15 and 4. If anybody say the Old Testament is invalid. 2 Peter 3, 1 and 2, Romans 15 and 4. We got more. We're going to Acts 24 next. Acts 24, verse 14 through 16. Paul himself. Acts 24, 8, 14 through 16. See, the New Testament, what people don't understand is the New Testament is a second witness to the Old Testament. It, just, it shows that the Old Testament was valid. Right? Prophecies come in the past, as it is written here, as it is written there. You feel me? So for you to throw, and the Old Testament is three quarters of the Bible. 
How are you trying to get a, any understanding of any book and you just did away with 75% of it? You had to lie at 25% and you tried to see what you're saying. It don't, it don't, come on, y'all, it don't work like that. We've been past a false doctrine. That's what has happened. A false doctrine that cannot be found in the scriptures. That you cannot prove that Christ, the disciples after him, while he was living or after he was living, that did any of this stuff. You can't even find it. Somebody would have came and collected by now. Man, we put four thousand dollars on the line per head every Christmas for the first person to show God giving Christmas in the Bible. We don't deny Christ was born. Where you read December twenty fifth? Tonka trucks, Santa Claus, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, Winter Time. Huh? What's the Winter Feast in Jerusalem? It's dedication. It's Hanukkah. It ain't, it ain't, the shepherds don't be in the field in the wintertime. Sheep definitely don't be feeding on no frozen grass. <laughs> like I'm throwing these things need to be more and more common. You see what I'm saying? If it's not in the Bible, who passed it to? Right. Right? Did you have been passed a false doctrine? The first thing Christ told his disciples in Matthew 24, when they asked him, what's the sign of your coming? When shall these things be and what's the sign of your coming to the end of the world? The first thing the Lord told them is say, watch out for the deception. He ain't giving no sign up. Watch for the deception. Many going to come claiming they dying. You see what I'm saying? So you being deceived ain't something that you all will. It's okay. I know it's satanic and wicked, but it's for the kids. Let's not play around with it. Got the word. Acts 24, verse 14. This is Paul right here. But this I confess unto thee, that after thee way, which they call, is say so worship, uh, wait a minute. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, heresy mm. so worship I the God of my father, leaving all things which are written in the law Ooh. and in the prophets. Is that Paul? <laughs> huh? Who you think was Paul the white Roman? <laughs> and Paul was a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. He had Roman citizenship, like you in America, right? Got citizenship in America. Yeah. Paul just said right here, I worship the God of my fathers, believe in all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Huh? So why was they proving Christ was the Messiah? They was going to the Old Testament and proving. Read, read the next two verses, my brother. And have hope toward God, which they themselves are also alive that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. See that? And that's something else he was teaching because the Sadducees, the Sadducees didn't believe that. They didn't believe in the resurrection. So those that follow Christ really believed he was harvested about that grave. He was resurrected. Right? Kind of hard for people to believe that. No, 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 no. no. Uh -uh. no Jefferson Burks is still full of grave bodies. What you mean? Right? The Lord give it to you all the time. Right? Every morning you wake up, what do you think that is? That's a foreshadowing of you getting out the grave. You almost die every night. Again, that crust that form around your eyes is called rigor mortis. That form around dead people's eyes. Your breath smell like brimstone and you're stiff. You almost die every night. And then what? You rise from what? The dead. Sleep is the cousin of death. You rise up, first thing should be off that stinking breath. Thank you, Lord. I've been resurrected again. He showed it to you every morning. Before you go to bed, if it be your will, I'll rise again in the morning. He showed it to you when you plant. Right? That which brought up, gotta die first, or be buried in the earth first. Right? Don't you take a seed, whatever what kind of seed it is, you drop it in the ground. Right? And then eventually what? It gotta spring up from the ground. So is the resurrection of the dead. Same thing. So you see it and you're harvesting and you're getting up every morning, but it's hard for you to believe the Son of God was resurrected out the grave, body and all. Why? You believe Adam was made from this? Dust? You believe John was in the belly of a big fish? Uh, when it comes to the spiritual things that you can't explain with your carnal mind, then here comes the doubt. Nah, I don't know about all that. I don't see it on the record. <laughs> Alright, brother, one more verse. We got the 16. 16. Yeah. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God mm -hmm. and toward me. All right, we got one more on that, Acts 28, 22, 23. 
Paul again, the Old Testament still stands, y'all. You're just not killing animals for the remission of your sins. That's what the, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ was about. He didn't, he didn't die so you can be an adulterer or an idolater or right. eat what you want to eat. He didn't take that beat so you can just do whatever you want and right. worship how you want to say, I love you, Lord. Yeah. Right. We need that. Uh, Luke 6 and 46. Why you call me?